I'm going to show you how to first back test this in the, and uh, for market replay. So these are the results. So what I'm going to show you tonight is the bull bear strategy. So we're going to get two files, okay? On that's going to be put on the. Um, you have the two updated files right now. Everybody has the updated file. What I'm also doing is I've added another toggle switch that we're going to add to the landing page. I'm going to send one file at a time to Gerald so he can wrap it, so I can work on each file. So the Momo file, which I'm going to show you, this is the Momo file. It is done. And I'm going to give it to Gerald on uh, Friday tomorrow, and he will start wrapping this Momo file. Do not email him. He will email everybody when it's wrapped, and we will put it on the landing page. Hey, Ron. Hey, Derek. So the landing page is the page which is going to have the files. It's going to have this exact file that I'm showing you tonight. So these are all the trades. Now, there's, there's two things I want to go over tonight with this Momo file. We're going to have separate conference calls for each file. This is the momentum conference call for the bull bear toggle switch strategy. I'm going to go over exactly how to do it tonight. Hey, Paul. So we're going to go over this exactly how to do it. Additionally, I have two PDFs. When Gerald's done wrapping this, I have a PDF he's going to put on the landing page that explains all the parameters and how to change and to um, you can optimize the system according to different markets that you trade, whether it be stocks, Forex, currency, any futures market, ETFs, etc. So, or crypto, it works on crypto markets also. So whatever markets you trade, I'm going to show you exactly what parameters change what in the PDF. I have tons of examples already done, um, and that PDF will be on the landing page also. So you guys currently have the most updated file, and what I'm going to add to it, I'm going to add two additional strategy files to the update. This is the one I'm going to show you tonight, okay? And, it, and once Gerald has it wrapped, I'll send this to him tomorrow. We will email members only, and we will get this uh, um, uh, on the landing page for you, and then you guys are good to go. Gerald's made a nice landing page, make it easy for you to click on the PDF from the landing page, and then click on the Momo uh, strategy. After that, there will be another one coming where I have a PDF and also um, I'm putting the bull bear strategy where you can optimize, I mean you can change the, uh, the buy and sell characteristics of the strategy, which I'll go over tonight. That's in the Momo and it's finished. I'm also putting that into the WAV file. So you have an option of changing these. You'll have a lot more parameters you can play with on the WAV file also. So what I'm going to go over tonight, this is what I want to show you. Now, obviously, past performance is not indicative of future results. Obviously, you sign a risk disclosure. Knowing that, we all are aware of that. Just because it worked uh, since this contract rollover on March 20th and gave these great results doesn't mean the next 30 days it will produce the same results. We know that. We're traders. We understand the risk associated with that. I just got to put that disclaimer out there because, you know, you know, traders say, well, why didn't you do 28,600 the next 30 days? So, you know, I think we are well aware of that. So, but this is what I want to show you tonight before I forward test this strategy. I'm going to show you how we can get this data into the Ninja Trader and how you can forward to, or you can uh, um, market replay it. But once you put the file into your, and you can do it with the file you have right now. If you go back 30 days, this is a 20 sim going 30 days back, which I'll show you in a second, and I just hit historical data. I want to show you how close we are to the historical data and where we're done running the replay. It's really, really close. So I want you to look at these numbers right now. All I did was before I put the replay on is I hit, I hit the chart when it was live, I mean when the market data was on, and I hit historical data when the strategy was on sim. And I hit historical data for the last since March 20th, or here's actually since the 21st until the 20th today. So as you can tell, the this is 30 days back. This is when the contract rollover was. It was actually on the 17th to so start trading on the 20th, March 20th. All right, I'm going to run the replay from March 20th. It will start, and it will replay all the way to the 20th of today. All right, 
So I want you to see these results. These are the results that occurred by me doing historical data. So what you can do when you're trying to find a certain parameter that you may like for different markets, before even running market replay, you can kind of judge what type of results you're going to get because I have slippage built into the strategy already. It will fill up the low or the high of the bar, meaning one or two bars above or below when the strategy comes with a buy or sell. Why is that important? Because it saves you time on trying to find what type of parameters you need to put in on specific markets that you trade instead of just doing market replay. Like if you excuse me, like these results with this, then you know that you can market replay this, which we will right now, and we should be pretty close. We should be right around this 81% level and right around 28,000 for four contracts, according to my parameters, which I'll show you in one second. So this was done before the replay, before I shut the data off. And I want to show you how this gives you a little heads up. This is the first thing I do. It's the first thing you should do. You should get in here and play it. I mean, uh, if, if your results are terrible, on a certain frame, it's not even close to where you want it. Your drawdown's too big, or the total net profit, or your profit factor's way off. I wouldn't even do the replay on it. I wouldn't even mess with it. All right. What I would do is I would go from if you're close, then you can do market replay, and then you're good to go. Uh, they're both standalone files. They'll be standalone on the um, the wave file. Also, Larry, standalone with a separate PDF. Yes. Yep. Yes, yes. Okay. Not unless Gerald, I got to talk to Gerald. If he has other plans, don't put that in stone. I know it's going to be a landing page. Let me talk to Gerald about it too. But that's how I assume we're going to do it. But assumption is not really, I shouldn't assume things. Let me talk to Gerald because he's the one that's wrapping this thing. So, but yes, uh, you will have a separate PDF on each one of those. Um, and the files will be on the landing page. All right, but what you will have, Larry, you will have this so far. So are we on the same page before I move forward? Let's let make, make sure. You can get into the, when you turn the file on, historical data, number, number of days back, go to the beginning of the contract rollover, 320. That's how you should test going forward. Are we on the same page? Don't go before 320 because you'll be into the uh, March contract. You need to be looking at the June contract. Are we all good going forward? You'll get different results if you try to go 60 days back or 90 days back because there's no volume in the June contract in, 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 in February or January. All right, we good? Okay. So let me slide this off. All right, so let's get into the strategy. So the strategy is this. So what you have right now is this. You have where you can put the trend on, right, the trend. You have a fast-moving average, slow-moving average. If that is checked, it will only go to the side of the fast-moving average cross. If the fast is a 20, 110, if the fast is below the slow, it will take only shorts in that direction. If the 20 is above the 110, it will only take longs in that direction. You can change that, okay, to whatever you want to do. You can change that to whatever you want to do. With this new file, I just keep trend off. With these results, the trend is off. So with these results I just showed you, it's taking counter as well as momentum trades. I mean, uh, with trend trades. This number is counter and trend. Are we clear on that? Are we good? Give me a why. The numbers I'm, I'm sending, I'm going to show you right now, are these exact numbers I'm going to show you. Okay? It's, this is trend filter off. Okay? If I get into the strategy then, and I'll show you how, to, how we're going to test this in a second because Phil wanted me to go over that with the tick data. This is tick data I've done on this also, which I'll show you how to do that in a second. So what you have now, you have you can put trend, uh, the retracement strength. We all know the file you have now, zero is the best strength you're going to get. What I'm trying to emulate right now on this bull bear toggle switch, so this is, let's say this is off. So this is turned off. It's going to be the same as the strategy you have now in, in, in your hands, okay? So if you do retracement strength to zero, I would keep trend on with the file you have. I actually, the file that you're going to update, I like the trend off because it catches some really big counter trades. Um, so I like it off with the what, what you have. I like it on personally 
You don't have to. I like it on uh, with these settings, right? And you guys can mark these settings down. These are the settings that we're going to test here tonight with the bull bear. So the bull bear is unchecked. It's going to go with the updated file you have in your hands right now. It's going to trade just exactly what you have. Whatever retracement strength you put in, zero, it's going to take very shallow retracements. What I've also added, which I'll go over, I have added in, um, I have added in trade size. You can change what you can't do right now, what you can do in this new file. You can change the number of contracts. You can trade one contract, two contract, three contract, four contract, you know, eight contracts, 16 contracts, whatever you want to do. The trade size is right there. I'll show you how to do that here in a second also. Start time, end time, you can change that. It won't take any trades outside of these times. And then I have a trail one, trail two, three, and four. Trail one, it's going to stop you out of all contracts if your first target is not hit when 38, if 38 trail closes outside of. If it closes outside of 38, it's going to sell all four contracts. So what I'm finding with the new file, you don't even need a stop, hard stop. So I put the hard stop way out there on a 20, 20 Rinko. I put it to 40 because I want these to get me out. I don't want, so you're going to notice on this strategy, the stop is not even affected. All right. So you can do that currently with your file you have and have these trails get you out. It's built the same way. So everything you have is built the exact same way. The only thing I added was I added more contracts or less contracts with contract size right here, trade size. And then I added this bull bear toggle switch. It's the only addition that I added to the system. Why is a bull bear toggle switch important? Because right now below, if you look here, this is our bull bear oscillator. And what it says is if I am in a, let's say, downtrend, so bear is here before we start playing this. Bear is the red line, the middle red line. So this is bear. So let's say you put 65 on your bull bear strategy as your bear. And then your bull is a 40 line down here. So bear being red line, bull meaning green line. All right, make this very, very simple for you to understand. So there's the bear line, we'll make red. And you can change this to anything you want. I made it customizable, so you have a lot of combinations now. What you have now, it only takes shallow retracements or deeper retracement, but it, it's, not, it's not really the oscillator is built in to only look for shallow, pretty much shallow and deeper, but not to the degree where you can change it to the exact setting you want. You can't do that with what you have now. With this, you can. You can change it to the exact setting that you want. So there's your bear, there's your bear line, All right? Your bull line is a green line. So if you have the bull bear toggle switch checked, and you're saying, okay, and let's say you don't even have, which I don't like on, the, on this new file, I don't even like the trend file because I don't think you need it because this oscillator works so good with these Rinko bars and with my, um, my volume spikes, my, my, um, with my, uh, my trinket, my uh, exhaustion bars. Hold on one sec. Let me get this real quick. There we go. Not bull bear. There we go. So, very simply. So let's say you put 40 as your bull number and you put 65 like here, like I showed in the room, as your bear number. Okay? What the bear number says is this. If, this, if, if we're moving in a downtrend and we're prices at price action is going down, we're going lower, 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 lower. It doesn't matter about how shallow and deep the retracement is here. It could be a deep retracement here or it can be a real shallow retracement. What it's going to look at is it's going to look at the oscillator below. If you put a certain number in, let's say you put below 65 as the bear. That means if I'm in a downtrend and I have my trend filter only looking for shorts or even without the trend filter, once I get pulled in, if I get speed bars that come in, right, and I got to have a speed bar that comes in before this will print. If I get speed bars that come in, then what will happen is, is I will get a arrow that fires here. 
I mean, at air up fires, that's your short. That's where the strategy will go short. If I put 65.40, if it's a bull and we're running higher, there's another bear. Let me find a bull above 40. There, here you go. If it's right on the line that you put, and it doesn't, doesn't matter now about the retracement size. If it retraces, I get my speed bars catching the rolling position traders. It shows an exhaustion in price. It's all built into the code. And then if I get, and I have the speed bars on a lower time frame, by the way. I don't have it on, you can use any time frame. The speed bars are to find exhaustion in price built into the code. If you get a above 40, the oscillators above 40, when you get a reversal bar, then you're going to go long there. So that is a bull buy. So you'll see the strategy does this. Right here, it's below 65. It will short this. The strategy will short. This is a bear. Because I put my bear at 65, my bull at 40. All right? So we'll keep going. So you see what I'm doing here. This is a bear short. It's right on 40, or right on 65. When I got my retracement, it's going to short right there. This is a bull. It's above the green line. It's above 40. The strategy will buy here. All right, so you get my point. There's a bull. That's why you really don't need a trend filter on this because these are actually signals that will come up. And this is if you have it below 65, that's a bear. So you can see these automatic arrows will come up on your wave file on the indicator or the Momo strategy there. So now it doesn't look at what you have. It looks at the retracement size right here. Now it doesn't look at the retracement size. It looks at the oscillator and if we're getting speed into that retracement. All right, so that's a neat thing about this new file. So if you go, we go further. So if, when, when I turn this thing on then, let's take a look. So here would be a cell. If I have 65, that would have been a cell here. The bear. All right, now let's get into the file then. So if I look at the file, These are the exact parameters that I'm going to replay for you and that show these results I just showed you. So, right now, if you're looking at what you have, you can go back and put these exact settings in and compare the difference of what the bull bear can do and then what you have, all right? The reason you can compare it is, here's my oscillator above. My oscillator above, the bear, the, the bull is the upper, I'm sorry, the bull is the lower and the bear is the upper. So, you know, what you do is you put your bull in at the lower and you put your bear in the upper. And you can, you can change what period you want as far as the oscillator goes also, all right? So what we can do then is we can, the bull says above 90 and the bear is below 10. That's what I have. I want to I show you I can emulate what you have right now on the system you have. Because if you have a zero retracement strength, that's typically above 90 or below 10. Above 90 for buys, below 10 for sells. So if I if I uncheck the bull bear, you retrace. You can compare the programs right away. You can say see what it does with the zero strength and is what it does with the bull bear. Well, you find the bull bear, your your uh, drawdown is uh, significantly lower uh, because it's taking all um, it's taking all the different waves not just shallow waves, um, and then it'll, you'll see that it evens out, uh, it evens things out a little bit better. So, but you guys can compare that. So if you check bull though, bull bear, then you want to put your numbers in. The upper would be the cell number, and the lower number will be the bull number. In fact, what I can do, I can put bull here. I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to put bull there for you, and then bear here so you understand. Bull is a lower. And bear is the upper. I need to change that. So I'll put bull 90. If we're anything above 90, it's a buy. Anything below 10 is a sell. All right, so that tells me when the strat is moving, and I'll show you this as we replay it. I'm below 90 is my sell, my bear. So 90 is up here. It's definitely way below. I mean, I'm sorry, 10. If 10, if, if it's below 10, 10 is way down here. Hold on. 10 is. 
down here, this, what, what is that right there? Yeah, that's 10, so let's find a 10. So you can do 10 or above 90 or below, whatever you want to do. So you have to see where where the most, these trades, like this is uh, 20 and this is, what, 70, what is it, 70, 80, 80 or 70, 70 and what, 20, it's almost 75, 25, and you'll get all these. So in other words, let me show you here real quick, and I'll show you at the end how we do this. But you, you, can, you can dictate what it takes now. So let's start this thing up first of all. Then I'll show you how to mark replay. So does everybody got these settings down? Hit me a wife to get all these settings down first. Another thing, you can change your percent D. You can change your percent D also, um, which is nice uh, because you can get sooner. Uh, I mean, you get more trades. Uh, the percent I have that's built in is different than, than this. So you can change that also. You can change all this stuff for the bull bear. So when you're doing bull bear, the upper is your bear and the lower is your bull. All right, does everybody got these settings down before before I move on? You, I'm gonna put a default of uh, I'll put a default of probably ninety ten to get shallow retracements, but you can change the same thing you want, Thomas. Now remember, you can go back and look and, and see what your strat has done since March 20th. Go back and look at what your strat has done that you have in your hands right now using these exact settings. If you do the strat you have, I would check on the trend filter though. Check on the trend filter. All right, so jot down those results and then look at the results on this replay we do. Okay? So jot down those results and then compare them to these right here. See how close you are. Look at this though. Look at the gross loss. That's what I want to show you. Look at the gross loss is almost doubled just taking the shallow retracements by themselves, not opening up to deeper retracements. This is cut in half. All right, drawdown's about the same. Plus or minus a couple hundred bucks. All right, so you guys can look at that. The one thing I want to show you also, and this is something I want to show you tonight, a lot of traders think you must have a big number on the trail for ATR. I'm going to show you how we can do this. And if I put 21 here and 21 here on a 20 Rinko bar, you're like, well, why are you using a trail 3 and trail 4 of a tight of 21? If you put that in there, your percentage profitability goes up around 13 to 14% because it tightens as you go higher. So a lot of you have been doing where you loosen it up in the beginning. I'm sorry, you tighten in the beginning, which you can. And then you loosen it up. You know, you go 21 here, 36, you know, 54, 63, let's say. I want to. I want you to test the other way too. What I'm finding is where you get your most. If you put a thousand ticks out here, like this on your fourth target, if you want percentage profitability to go up, instead of letting that contract come all the way back down and stop you out if it doesn't reach that thousand tick on that ATR trail, let's see, it takes a loss on it. It's better to get stopped out at a smaller ATR. Watch your percentage profitability. These same numbers. It's going to do one of two things. This number will go down to around 23 to 24,000. This will bump up to 93 to 94%. And this gross loss will get cut down also. Because you're letting your last fourth, your third or fourth contract get stopped out at a tighter ATR. A lot of you don't know that. A lot of you guys have not been doing that. Try it. Try these exact settings. What I want you to do is jot down these exact settings like this, especially with this new file. And I want you to do tick data on the replay. I did tick data, not minute data. I'll show you how to do that in a second. This is tick data I'm replaying today. Tick data. Phil wanted me to run tick data, not minute. So replay tick data, which I'll show you how to do in a second. 
you should have the same results I'm looking at here. But at the end, what I want you to do when you get this, and you can even do in the file that you have now, change this to 21, one tick above the Rinko size. Now what you're doing, you're letting it breathe a little bit in the beginning, and you're tightening up at the end when, the, when it's really running. Because if it's not going to have a substantial move up, what it does, it stops you out at a tight ATR that follows right at the low of price action, right at the lower high. All right, just try it. I, I want to show you the difference because you can manipulate your profit and loss and also your drawdown basically by using your ATRs. And I want to show you how you can do that. Your ATR, you can adjust your drawdown and profitability and percentage profit, etc., by your ATRs. A lot of you guys don't know that. Not this stop. The stops are relevant. Put it out there, way out there, so you don't have to hit it. Hit it 40. By using this, by front loading heavy, uh, letting it swing more in the beginning, that's when trends start. They oscillate more. And then they take off, and then it gets tighter. So try that. Try it both ways. All right? You'll see what I'm talking about. In fact, if we get a chance, I can run it both ways, and I'll show you the difference. All right? So bull bear, if toggle switch is on. I got any buys and sells above bull is above 90, bears below 10. I got my trend filter off. And we're going to apply it, and we're going to get this thing ready to go. Now, when you turn the strategy on, it should turn green over here. If it's not on, it will not be green. Now it's green. Everybody see that? Does everybody see it green? It's a best available price, Paul. First touch is for the um, first touch is my um, FZR trades. We'll get into that in the next conference call. It has nothing to do with the Momo though. Momo is the best available price. Everybody understand if it's green, it's on. Are we are we good to move on? Give me a why if yes. Why, why, why? Are we good? Green means on. We okay, guys, to move? Okay. If it is off, it will not be green, right? If it's yellow, what does yellow mean? Yellow means it's on, but it's in a trade. All right, it still means it's on. It's not going to take a trade that's already in. All right, it means yellow. Make sure you understand that. When you guys are back testing, here's what you have to do. Now, I don't want to turn this thing off and on because I've already loaded it up, and Phil knows it takes a little while to do this. Go to your connections. You have to disconnect when you back test. Disconnect from your Ninja Trader. Disconnect. You have to disconnect first. That's one. After you disconnect your data, you go under tools. You go to historical data. Come to historical data. Here's what I'd like you to do right now. Just follow to emulate what I'm doing. You go down to load. Click load. Click. Get market replay data. Click it. All right, put it on tick to emulate what I'm doing right now. I downloaded all tick data tonight, not minute. Click it on tick. Click minute off. Make sure tick is clicked. Go to your current contract, not 323, 623 ES. If you want to emulate what I'm doing, you have to click on the ES big contract. Then you come in and you go to today's date. The 19th. Right now, I have it on right now, but then you're going to hit download. Down here under loading, it will show it's loading. Once that disappears, you go in here and click 18. Click download. You can't depress it now because I already have it loaded up. Because it takes a little while for the tick to do it. It takes about a good minute to do, but I'll show you. If it doesn't come up, I'll show you what to do. So you keep doing this, right? You click all the dates. 17, download. You'll see it says loading that data. Go all the way back to March 20th. 
So go from March 20th, 30 days back, from the current program you have until today's date, which is the 20th. It's going to save all that data in replay. All right, don't use this download up here above. Okay, I like using this individually right here so I get really accurate tick data. All right, once you get that done and you have them all the dates, right? So we go to, let me show you again. We go to tools. You got to take connection off, disconnect. It has to be disconnected. I'm connected right now. Disconnect, go to tools, historical data. You come over, you click load. You click get market replay. You put in the current contract that you want to trade. I mean, look at. You want to go ES623. You come in. Go back to March 20th. Hit March 20th. Hit download. It will show in the bottom right corner loading data for March 20th. Then go in 21st. Load. When it stops saying load, go March 21st. Hit download. When it stops loading, go 22nd. Hit download. When you're done downloading all the dates you want, all the way to today's current date. You come under connections and you hit playback connection. When you hit playback connection, this is going to come up automatically right here. It's not going to give you the exact dates, right, that you put in at first. It'll only go by past, uh, like a week or so. This green, this green arrow, I mean this green uh, playback button has to be green. When it's green, then you can change your dates to back to wherever you want. So if it says April the 15th, then you come in here and you hit it and go back to March 20th and hit March 20th. Once you hit March 20th, you got to click on the chart. When you click on the chart, it's going to start spinning and it's going to put you to 320 to 419. When it turns green, that means you're ready for replay. Now, if you do tick data, which this is tick data I'm showing today, it takes longer than minute data, but it's more accurate than minute data. So that being said, if you go to connections and you hit playback, and it's been over about a minute and a half or two minutes because you're doing tick data and it hasn't come up, what I do is this. I just disconnect, and I reconnect playback connection, and it usually comes up within 30 seconds, the second time you do it. If you guys have a problem, I've only had that issue with tick data, not minute data. But tick data, it takes a little bit more to, to, to load. So in other words, if you come in and hit connection, and you hit playback connection, and this green doesn't come up after a couple minutes, then disconnect it, and then reconnect it, and it should fire right up. After it fires up, you, you click on the start date, because your end date will be correct. Click on the start date. Go back to 20th. Double click 20th. It will come in this box. Then you have to click on the chart. Once you click on the chart, it will say downloading up here. It will say you're connecting up there. All right? We good to go? All right. Now that I'm green, I'm going to start playing. Now you can start seeing your data tick. Go to max. So here at MAX. Make sure you go to max. I'm going to put this up here. Now, let's say that you are like this short right here. Let's say that you put in 80 20 80 as my as my 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 um 80 as my bear and 20 as my buy it would short this right here then right but i got 90 and 10 in as my bull bear but you can change your bull bear to whatever you want to change to to get these big moves like this also that's the neat thing about this custom 
bull bear strategy. All right, so once we see a buy here again, let's hit pause so you guys understand what's going on. All right, so this one was what? The low of this oscillator was 79. Well, that's like right at 80, okay? Well, I got 90. I got 90 and 10 in my bull bear strategy. So if I have 80 and 20, then it's going to take this long also. And you're going to get the strategy to take it long there. And I'll show you how to do that at the end. You can take all these swings if you want according to if you if adjust, the, adjust the oscillator the way, the way we want it. But you notice how the 10, 10 levels down here, you see this? You see how the oscillator stayed below 10? See how it stayed below 10? And then we got a pause in the market, and then we got a reversal. That's why the arrow fired. Are we clear where the bull and bear is going to fire? Yes or no? It's according to where you put the bull and bear threshold at. Are we on the same page? It has nothing to do with the length of the retracement. Now it has everything to do with what? Are we in a bull, bull bear push according to where you put the oscillator at? All right? If the oscillator was here and I put the oscillator in at 80 and 20, then it took this one and this one. Make sense? Okay. Keep moving. All right, these are just my trails. The first trail, if the first target doesn't even hit, it's going to get you out of all the contracts at the first trail at a small stop, right? This my last, 63 is my last target. All right, okay, so stop right here. Stop. Let's say I want to put 40 in and 40 and 65. Then it would go long here because 40 is my bull, right? 40 is my bull. So the, the strategy will go long here and it will go long here because it's both above my green 40. See how that works? If you want this one and this one. But I got it saying I want extreme. I want extreme momentum. I got 90 and 10 in here, so watch. So what it's going to do? It's looking for extreme blow-off rallies or blow-off sell-offs because look where my oscillator is at. Now my oscillator is above 90, and that's my bull. My bear is below 10. All right, let's keep playing so you guys understand this. Now I'll have this on the triple trend also, wave file, which a wave file um, should be a little bit more accurate than even this one, and this one is, is doing really, really well. But like I said, right here, if you want it 40, it caught this one also. That's a long if you want 40 as your bull. This one it does not because it went below 40, right? So that's not a buy. This is the buy on the indicator or the strategy. It's just, it's just wherever you set it at. Let's keep moving. I specifically want to show you wherever you put it, it's going to wait until that's executed. It's very precise. Meaning, it's going to make sure that if it's a blow-off rally, a blow-off sell-off, it will only catch those if you put it to the out, outer edges like that. Like here, 40, if you put 40, it's going to catch that. Let's keep running through real quick. It's only on the first day, so let me just keep this running. I won't stop it no more. We'll keep it running. Now, what I have right here, this is what I did. We should be pretty close. To here, right? Because this is what I, I did right before hitting the replay when the data was on. I hit historical data for 30 days back. This is what we got. Okay, you see how we're above the 90 threshold? And it goes long. Then it starts trailing with price. My first trail doesn't get me out. I would have sold all the contracts at a small loss. It does not. Because your trail now is your stop. You don't need a hard stop to be your trail. I got 63 as my last target. We'll kick in. You're good to go. But you can see, you see how it's above 90. Now, I haven't found any trades for blow-off rallies above 95 on my personal settings. I mean, there are 97 13s. I see 96 14, so like that. I mean, uh, not 96 4s, 93, uh, so on. But I, it's very rare that if I see, you know, anything above 95 5, it's very rare because the market's already – an extreme level push already. But you see how you can dictate it here, guys, right? So we're going to look for this number on this forward replay because once you once you hit historical data going 30 days back to March 20th, we should be pretty close to this number when we're done on tick. 
All right, the market will continue to push. Wherever you put those bull bear readings is where it's going to take trades at. It has nothing to do with the swing now. With what you have now has to do with the swing, shallow swings or deep swings. Now it's reading on the oscillator, whether it be high, low, whatever it is, as long as it reads weakness or price strength, it's going to catch that trade. All right? Now, like I said, we'll have a PDF with this. We also will have it file on the, we will have it on the, um, we will have it on the landing page. Here again, if you have an, if you have the reading in there at 80, again, here's another 80, 80 winner. See, it's above 80. I have it at 90. See how it won't take the trade? It's very, very accurate as far as that goes. Look how the turning point was 80. So if you had 80 in there instead of 90 as my bull, it caught, it's going to catch this one too, right? It won't catch this one because it's way below 80 or 90. But if you want to catch the ones, my, my, those standard is, is, is 40, 40, 60 for any given trade, any given day. But you see the difference in here and here? See how the oscillator got below my 90 threshold? See how it, right, it rode right on my 90 threshold? And then we get a buy signal comes right down to my uh, ATR doesn't pop me out and then my longer ATR still running now it stopped me out as far as that goes on my runner all right you guys starting to understand this a little bit now as we walk through this hit me why if we, we're good to go you understand how you can place your oscillator where you want it according to trend or without trend so you can really customize this indicator to take trades anywhere you want on any given market depending on the strength or the weakness that you want, period. It's pretty cool. Now, the cool thing about the, um, the, cool thing about the, the, the wave file, I've already got a triple trend built into that, right, with my wave structure, with my, my, my zones. So it won't go anything against zones. So once I get the bull bear built into it, we'll run it beside each other. I'm already batting this already, which is really good right and I can get this up to even over 90 90 percent 93 percent over the last 30 days if I tighten my ATR to 21 from from 63 but I got a good feeling when we put it in the wave file it should go up because the triple triple trend will keep away any negative counter trend trades that may happen but once again here we go again do you see how the thresholds above 90 and she fires in the trade at that level also all right so that just gives you how you can customize this to how you want it now like I said this is without trend this is without trend oops let's get that back up there's no trend filter you can put a trend filter in there the wave will have a trend filter so right now this is what we're looking at so far So you had a little bit of drawdown so far. The, the profit factor is really good. That's what we have so far as of now from starting it on replay. Any questions why this thing runs? And, and we'll walk through this more. Now up here you see it's on 322. I got this thing going to 419. If you see a stall in data, that means it's the weekend. One thing I want to tell you about, if you're using a trailing stop, whatever Rinko size you use, so this is a 20 Rinko, right? This is a 20 Rinko. You can't put your trailing stop at 10 on a 20 Rinko or you're going to get stopped out on every single one of your trades. If you're running live data, yes, sometimes you get away with an 18 and it doesn't hit if it takes off right away. But typically, go one tick outside of your Rinko size. So if I'm using a 20 Rinko, this is a 20 Sim Rinko, and this data is off the 20. It's not off of a big, a large Rinko size. It's 20. This data is off that. Use one tick outside of it as a standard rule of thumb. Okay? It's not removed. It was never put in to the. It was never put into the um, into the uh, wave file. I mean, it's never put into the Momo file 
It's only the WAV file because the WAV file does the same thing. Yep, it's only the WAV file, but uh, the WAV file will have that, Larry. Yes, correct. All right, let's stop it right now, real quick. All right, do you see how? Do, do, do you see it fire here? Watch. Why did fire that long? Because I'm in extreme reading above 90 bull and see below bear. See that? Bear reading right there. There's your bear reading. My bear reading is 10. Now, if I have my bear reading below, which is your standard reading, when I started doing this, guys, in, in hard downtrend markets, hard uptrend, anything below 90 is really good, uh, 80 below or 20 above. I mean, it'll catch these. If you want to catch these also, you can put that under your parameters. All right. You can see I'm only taking extreme readings on this level. That's a nice trade. It's a real nice trade. All right. One second. All right. So here again, if you put your bull in at 20 and your bear at 90, they would take that trade. So just depending how many trades you want to take. Right now I'm going to take an extreme readings. Extreme reading. I got it below 10. Now it's trailing. Hammer me with some questions why this thing is running. Any questions? Questions, questions. It will not take a second trade. No, 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 no. What I've done, Martin, that's a great question. So it's in this trade. Let's hit pause. Martin brings a really big question up, which is a great question. So it's in a trade right here, right? And we got another sell reading. Let's say you have uh, 90 or, or uh, 65 as your bear. Well, this is a sell reading. If 65 is your bear, this should sell it right there, right? You should get short right there because the oscillator never got above my 65 bear right there. It's below it. So does it take another trade? No, it does not. It will only take another trade when you're stopped out on your last trail. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, explain yourself, Veronica. I'm not sure what that question pertains to. Meaning what we have now or what you have in your hands? No. What the difference between now and here, that's what I want you to run. What I want you to run, uh, Veronica, and even when you get this in your hands, check what you have now with the zero setting and then check now with the 90-10 and you can compare the difference because that's pretty much what it is. But the difference is I put the D down to 12 from 14, which you have 14 built into the code. I made the percent D customizable for you. So it is going to be different. You're going to get less drawdown with this system we have that you're going to be up uploading. The results are really similar, though. It's just your drawdown uh, and your percentage of, of profitability goes up, which is important, obviously. But yeah, you can put in the same exact numbers, and you can do it tonight. So what I want you to do, Veronica, tonight, put in the exact numbers, the exact levels that I just uh, uh, that I'm running right now, and do it in the system going 30 days back. In fact, here, take a picture of this. All right, Veronica, take a picture of this. Go 30 days back, and look at the system that you have tonight on the on the on the on the um, that you have in your hands right now. Look at the gross loss. Look at the max drawdown. Look at your, your profitability. Look at your profit factor. I want you to put the exact same settings in, and then you'll see the difference. Okay? This is more optimized because you, you can change the settings, which everything was hard-coded, if that makes sense. Everything was hard-coded on what you have, and I've got a lot, a lot of feedback. Traders want to take different, different momentum. They just don't want to take this right here, right? Certain traders just don't want to take this right here where it's extreme. They want to take below 65 trades too if they're scalpers, right? They want to take this trade right there. So they want to get scalped that, and they want to take this short here too. 
right? Then if it's below 65 again, see this one over here? Below 65, they want to take this trade too, or they want this to pop up on their indicator, which it will. They want to take this trade too. You see what I'm saying? It's more customizable. Below 65, they want to take this trade. These are all qualified trades that you, you can put into the system. And this one, they want to take this one also. That's the big difference. Does that make sense, Veronica? You can get more trade setups. They want to take that one. This one is too far up. Does that make sense? Now you can customize and say, hey, I'll take all these. Where what you have is hard-coded to only take a select few. Okay, great question. All right, let's get going. Let me put the thing back up here. Hold on a sec. I right, see what we're working with now. Now we're on 323. That's the results we're looking at right now. So far, around 89%. There's your max drawdown. This is the big contract, four contracts. This is on tick data too, guys. It's not minute data. Phil wanted me to run tick data, which I understand. It's more accurate. Tick data will be more accurate than minute data. He is exactly correct. So if you're doing replay, do yourself a favor and do tick data. I totally agree with Phil. Do the tick data. Don't have to do minute data. All right, we're going to let this run through. And let me show you this, why this thing's running through. Oops. Remember, if the data stops, it means it's a weekend. One second. All right, so look at that. Let me get this over here. So when you're doing this, Right, when you're doing this, I'll have all these preset for you in here already. But when you're doing this, um, if bull and bear is unchecked, it's going to be the system that you have in your hands right now. Make sure we're aware of that. If bull and bear is unchecked. Right, now you see how it takes counter trend trades and trend trades right here? Look at this. See how beautiful that is? It flipped from trend right to counter trend trade because I have what I'm finding with what we have now and Veronica when you run the system you have now I'd run it with trend I'd run it with trend run it with trend what I'm finding the system that I had that 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 we could change bull bear I like counter and trend both I like them both Like them both because C is taking trend trades and it's taking counter trades. Yes, it's the momentum strategy that you have, David. Yep. It's just my open file file that I have. Yep. You see why I took the shallow trade? Shallow trade because I have 10 in there as my bear, right? And I got 90 as my bull. So this big red line down here is my bear. And this big red line up here is my bull. But you can change it to anything you want in between here. Yeah, the indicator, uh, that will be the wave file, Derek. So the wave file, hey, guys, and th that's a great question, Derek. And that's why you're getting uh, one, one file at a time here is that the wave file will have an audible alert where you can put the wave uh, in, not this obnoxious sound that we have right now when an arrow comes up. You can put the arrow to dictate when the arrow fires depending on the strength and weakness that you want, and then it's going to fire an audible alert on the wave file. It won't do it on the 
uh, it won't do it on the Momo file. The Momo file is only for strategy, to run the strategy. The weight file will be indicator and strategy. Correct. Okay, man? You can do both. And it will file an audible alert when that fires. I'm already working on that right now. And you can customize where that arrow fires. And you can customize when that strategy fires. What I've done is I got a lot of feedback with uh, traders inside. And listen, I appreciate all this feedback inside and outside the room. Right now we're on a weekend, guys. So I'll start trading here in a second again. I appreciate all the feedback because this feedback from all you traders that are using the program, so a lot of traders don't trade the S&P. They trade the DAX. We've got traders that even trade the Bitcoin futures. I mean, we got traders that trade pretty much the euro against the U.S. dollar. I mean, there's a lot of different traders that trade different things. So I get a lot of feedback from different traders from different markets. But the one thing that resonated to me that really resonated is that they wanted something to customize per market. Maybe the NASDAQ uh, likes to go deeper retracements to 40 instead of uh, doing shallow retracements all the time. Um, maybe the, uh, the euro or the Swiss franc or soybeans or corn, it doesn't, it, you don't have extreme blow off rallies. It oscillates between 80 and 20 and that's when you get readings. So what I wanted to do is I wanted something to open the code up and say, hey, I'm going to give you the best reading that I think is out there for the S&P. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm showing you. And then you guys can customize it to anything you want on any given market because this works across the board, even on stocks. The weight file will trip the, if the weight file will have the indicator. It'll print the error on the chart with an audible alert and the strategy will fire at the same time. Wherever that arrow fires that you put in to fire, Thomas, that's exactly where the strategy will fire. And I did exactly what you wanted to customize the the D and everything on the entry. You can customize it to whatever you want to, 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 to fit that market. Yep. All right, so now start trading again. We're on what, 327? We're still cranking through here. I'm just gonna let this thing play through and then uh, we'll be done with this. So any questions why this thing is still playing through? Now here once again, see if I would have had if uh six if I have the the bull at 40 or even the, the bull at 65, see it catches that one, it'll catch that one. Or if I got the bear right here, if I got the bear at uh 80, it'll catch that one. So and I showed you that this morning. When you members were in the room this morning, I showed you I flipped the 90 and 10, right? I flipped the bull and bear totally upside down. I put the bear the the bull at 10 and the bear at 90 and we saw it took like what six five or six trades yesterday in a row so you can let this thing trade as much as you want or you can back it all the way down and you don't have to let this thing trade unless there's serious momentum in the market that's what's cool about this strat you can let it trade a lot or you can back it all the way down and cherry pick the trades you that you want to fit that market you know so that's totally totally up to the trader as far as that goes the, the, the one thing you'll notice here, like, like right here, you're using the ATR as the stop. We don't use hard stops now. You don't need to use hard stops. Put the hard stops out there. This is a 20 Renko bar. I got a 40 stop in there just as a fail safe. But the, the, the fail safe is really the, the, the ATR. I mean, the ATR should be your stop. I'm finding really good results with just using the ATR as a stop. All right, here again, major weakness in the market. You can tell. I'm below 10, that's what's in the strat, I'm trailing, and so then I got my last one out at 63, and it will just trail that as far as that goes, um, as far as until the next trade. All right, you can bring this down to one contract, two contracts, three contracts, four contracts, five contracts, 10 contracts, 15 contracts, 30 contracts, whatever you guys decide. Since some of you guys want to trade the micros, um, I did, Add that into the file. All right. Any other questions? We're up to 326. We're getting to 419. I'm not going to stop it anymore no because Gerald wants to shut this thing off. So we're going to keep letting this thing run. As we go through them, you can see that here I have the trend filter 
off on this right now. That's a sell setup. If it is below 25, 75, 25, you want that. that catch, it would sell right here if you wanted it to. Right now, I have a specific buy and sell above 90, below 10 for below offs. But if you, you can tell, the 75, 25 comes up a lot. These momentum trades like this. So if you want that, you can put that in there. This is an FZR trade. This was this will never come in on a momentum setup. It won't even you, you can't put a number in there to get this trade, but you can if you put 75 25 as far as that goes. Yeah, Gerald, I'm just gonna keep letting it play. It won't be too long now because it's going through data pretty quick. Um, it won't be that long, and then we'll uh, we'll good we'll be good to go. All right, any other questions while we're going through this? Everybody understand now? Do uh, you have a good feel how this thing works? Everybody understand we're getting a PDF with this? Everybody on the same page? Anybody not understand what we're doing here? Why it's firing trades? You will have a PDF with it. Please do not email Gerald with this. I am getting this program over to him tomorrow. He will have it in his hands. Do Let him do his thing. All right, he's got to figure out what the best way to wrap this, get it on the landing page. Let him do his thing. We will put this on the landing page. He's done a really great job of doing the landing page. So, you know, I will get the PDF over to him too when he's done wrapping, and we'll put the PDF right alongside the file. Again, here's 25. 75 works out again. You see this? What was that? 75, that's actually 81 reading, so that's a long right there, 75, 25. Hey, Veronica, take care. All right, let's see where we're at here. So we're around 80%, like I said, 80% on this one. I can bump this thing up to 93% from March 20th to here by just changing my last trails to 21.21. The reason this has a little bit of a drawdown here is because my last trail is 63. I can bump this up to around 91, 92, 93% the last 30 days, which you can do that on your own also. You'll see this efficiency bump up. This will bump down. This will bump down a little bit because you're keeping a tighter trail. You can see the reward to risk on the large contract on four contracts is great. Profit factor is great. In other words, what I can do, we're right in line right now to do uh, the levels I gave you before. But you can see this 63, if you don't want to, uh, if, if you want this to trail tighter, you can do that. And that's going to bump up your efficiency. So you can bump this up and just have it trail price after the first three contracts. You can bump it up and have it trail tighter if you want. Totally up to you guys. All right, any other questions? Questions, questions, questions? Okay, David, missed the first few minutes, but we'll catch up on the setting. Yeah, and David, what I would do, put those exact same settings in the program you have now, and I want you to re jot those settings down and keep those settings. And then when you upload the new program, put the exact same settings in again and put 90 as your bull and 10 as your bear, meaning put 90 as the upper, I mean the lower and the upper as uh, 10. Lower is 90, upper is 10, and then look at the same settings. And you're going to see the difference. You'll see the big difference. Also, what you have now in your program, change the last two, uh, you have the, I give you all the settings in the beginning, which I just showed you. Change your program, change the last two ATRs to 21. So, in other words, your first two contracts hit, and then it tightens up to 21. Watch how your percent profitability goes up and your drawdown goes down. By using a tighter ATR, by using a tighter ATR at the end instead of a longer ATR. All right, a lot of traders don't understand that, and I'm going to try to show you that in, the, in these conference calls.
I just want to show you the flexibility on this thing. This has so many combinations. Not the, the, the trail is really key. The trail is totally going to affect your drawdown, your profitability, and everything right across the board because you're putting your stop way out. So that's the key. That's the key. So like, like these are blow-off rallies. These are blow-off rallies, all these. Look, they're a ball above 90. Oh, yes. Okay, so when you talked about will it take existing trades, yes, it will have add-on trades only if this exists. And Phil makes a great point. Someone asked me if it, add, if it adds on trades. Who was that earlier? Hey, Phil, thanks for bringing this up. That's a great point. Someone asked me if it add on trades. It will add on trade if I get that specific setting that comes up inside of a running ATR. It doesn't add on trade. So if it took three off, it's going to add three back on if it comes with a qualified trade again. But it will never go above your original contract amount. That's what Phil wanted before. You guys understand this? Here, let me show you because Phil's talking about that right here. That's a great. Thanks for bringing that up, Phil. So it won't take a trade if there's no other. It won't take any trades unless it's in a trade where another qualified trade comes in. It's got to be qualified. If it qualifies, then yes, it will add the three contracts back in that you sold before inside of a running ATR. However, the difference from this program and last program, it has to be inside of a running ATR. It has to be, or it will not add those three contracts back on. You will not see it add back on contracts, three back on, unless you're inside of a running ATR and it's a qualified trade. Thank you, Phil, for bringing that up, for, for clarifying that. It will not go more than your original contract size, though. Only if the, it, it doesn't happen very often unless you have blow-off rallies or blow-off sell-offs. It, it does it automatically, and it doesn't happen that often that I don't, we don't need a toggle switch for it. Yeah, Gerald, it's coming. It's coming. It's almost in, um, it's almost in April. We're getting there, man. Yeah, it's something you talked about inside the running ATR. It, it, you'll see it happen with, with blow-off rallies, blow-off sell-offs. Now, it will happen a lot if you use a smaller time frame and you get a runner. It does happen like we'll, it will keep adding. I, larger time frames, it, larger rinkos, it doesn't happen that often. You don't need a toggle switch because it doesn't happen that often. And you want to you want to participate in a running ATR, Larry. You want to. You want those to come in because those are the running ATRs are where the market is hot. Yeah, you want those. You don't want. It's not like you don't want those. You want those to come up. You're begging for those to come up because you already have a running ATR to protect your stop. Those are the ones where. That's when the S&P moves up 50 points, 30 points, 40 points, 30 points. You see what I'm saying? If you got these blow-off rallies, man. And it happens with news. You'll see it. That's another thing with news also. You know, the rule of thumb is five minutes before news, five minutes after news, you know, on running this guy. Some of you guys will like three minutes before news, three minutes after news. You know, I like three minutes. I think a rule of thumb is five minutes. But, you know, you just don't really want to run this through non-farm payrolls. You know, it's, just, it's not conducive to a winning trading plan. Your, your, your ninja trader is going to lock up. It's going to lock on you. And then you don't know if you're filled or not filled. So go to forexfactory.com and look for the red impact numbers. It takes two seconds to see, you know. And you can see if there's uh, – I, I print the weekly calendar out myself on a Sunday. It's free. Go to Forex Factory. So what you need to do – let me just show you while we're recording this. All right. We're on a weekend right now. One sec.
It's actually April Fool's Day, according to the chart. Hey, take care, Chris. Hey, good night, Paul. All right, so when you go to forexfactory.com, it's a free website. Get this out of the way. So you can go up to the, the right here, the calendar. Just go over to, let's blow this up. Go to filter. See this filter on the right? Looks like a looks like a funnel. And only check red impact, right? You don't need the yellow or the orange impact numbers with the with the strategy you're just concerned about the red impact apply the filter which I've already applied now you can put this on a weekly basis or daily basis so you can see what time some big numbers are now the manufacturing PMI I'd run the strategy through that I'm not worried about that but the ones you got to worry about we go to next week consumer confidence strategy can run through that I'm not really worried about that the GDP that's a big one you know, the, the four big ones to me are the first week of the month, non-farm payrolls that Friday. Then you got, uh, you got CPI, PPI, retail sales, and GDP. I would not run the strategy through those. A lot of volume. But go to Forex Factory, and you're, you should be good to go. Yeah, I, I know, Gerald. It's almost done. It, it's cranking. Here, hold on one sec. All right, so you see the dip, uh, the results up here so far. Well, let me show you the results we got here by running all the way to March. Yeah, yeah, hold tight, Gerald. It's 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 getting there, bud. It's getting there. So that's the type of results we got so far. All right, this is the large contract, four contracts on the S&P 500, taking every trade from 1:30 a.m. in the morning, and the four o'clock at night is taking every single trade from the parameter that I put in right here of bull above 90 bear below 10 right now another one just filled right there that's what we're looking at so far all right yeah it's halfway it's cranking brother it's cranking This would be the longest video we do on this too. I just want to get traders a feel for how this thing works on all trades. It's Phil, if you you can do that yourself because the amount of time it takes to load tick data. It's typically I, I can do it in the room. I can show you in the room at the end of the I can do at the end of a uh, end of a uh, I see the morning too. It's tough. You, you, you can do it. Uh, we can have we we can do a recorder call. I guess we can do a recorder call on how to do it. It's just with tick data. It takes forever. Let's just walk through it so you know how to do it right now. You can do it yourself tonight. It's not hard. Just take connection and make sure it's disconnected. Just disconnect it. Disconnect it. Once it's disconnected, go to tools. Once you go through tools, go to historical data, hit load, get market replay, take it off minute, put tick. Now the tick, it does, here's the trick to it, Phil. I'm going to tell you the trick right now. Now you got to pay attention to this. This is the trick. When you put ESO3 and you put all these in, right, you start downloading all these days, and you're done downloading, and you click this off, and you get connect, and you hit playback connection, this is the trick to it. 
if you don't get this green box that comes up, this green little playback, if it does not come up within two minutes, it does this with tick. It doesn't do it with minute. It does it with tick. Go back up to connections. Disconnect it. Reconnect it again. And it should fire that green button right up in about 30 seconds. Okay? That's what you need to do with tick. You don't do it the minute, but when I ran tick last night on this and today before I got in the room, the tick does that where you need to disconnect, connect it back in, and it should fire the tick right up. When you get the program, you should be able to go back from 320 to today's 419. You should see the same results under tick that I'm showing today. Because it, it's looking at tick data. It's not looking at minute data. Today, it's looking at tick. I downloaded tick. All you guys should put tick in. You'll see, this, you'll see the same thing I'm seeing today. All right. But that's one thing I know is with tick. Tick's a little bit different than minute. If it doesn't come up right away, disconnect. You don't have to re-download. You do not have to re-download the data. Disconnect, reconnect, and it should fire right up for you, bud. And that's all there is to it. Very simple. Yeah, we can show this here. Let, let, let's let's take a look at what we're doing. Hold on. So let's say we can look at that stuff right now. So if you do, 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 let's go. If you pull up the performance summary, go to the analysis, set the time from daily half hour increments. Yeah, we can do that. Go to period and show how profits are distributed during every half hour of the trading day. Yeah, sure. Let's go here. Let's do that right now, Phil. Let's go here and let's hit uh, real time. Let's do that right now, Phil. We got time. And Gerald's recording. All right, so we're at 26,584% looking good. There's your drawdown. Let's go to analysis. Let's go to half hour increments. All right, there you go, Phil. Oh, what's well, coded in the program sometime windows to on off instead of what we have now, which is just one start stop time. You can set the master start time for trading. You could have some interval window of time to shut it down and restart. I got you. I got you. Yeah, that's something to look into. But yeah, this is what um, what we're here. You guys can what you can see. This is the breakdown on on uh, during the day. This big bar, 2:30 p.m. seems to be the most optimal time as far as this one goes. Uh, hour day. From 10 a.m. until 3 p.m., that window, according to this strat, nice window. There's your daily. So he, he, here's your daily, Mark, guys. This is your daily we're looking at. 83%, 87%, 91%, 100%, 70%, 62%, 100%, 88%, 100%, 100%. So from 320, that's a daily breakdown. You can also do that by going to analysis. Obviously, past performance is not indicative of future results. Make sure we understand that. But yeah, you can also do that. You can go weekly. How's it done per week? Obviously, that contract rollover week was just enormous. That's a big that, – that typically happens, though. I don't know if you guys noticed that, the week after contract rollover. But I had a real big week, the uh, 320 to 327. There you go. But you guys can pull that data up also by going to analysis under summary. That's what we're looking at in this replay so far from 320. I hit real time. I did not hit – as far as that goes, that's a real time. Just go up there and you want to click real time. And then you can see you know, we're batting around, what, 82% since 320.
yeah there's there's ways we can customize it to do that this is the 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 pretty much the generic version on ninja how to do this you know just to get a feel feel for it and to get the settings down for it but there's a lot of lot of ways we could do it to to optimize it absolutely absolutely the whole point is making sure you guys understand why momentum's coming in the market you see I'm below my 10 again good to go all right and make sure you play with those settings on on the on the back end of it watch I, I don't think any traders have done this yet not that I know of using a smaller ATR at the end of the ATRs try that out and look how your drawdown and max percent goes up if you want to do that some traders like different results they like to let it wiggle more and other traders like it really tight so it's totally up to you how you want to do it but the ATR is a key adjusting the ATR will help you do that hey Gerald how much time we got on this thing now how much time we got All right, what I could do is I could, um, Gerald can shut this off if he, if he wants or we can let it run and we'll see the end result or I just leave this running for everybody. You know, I, I, I showed you what it, what the, this is tick data. So this really helps out. I mean, it's totally up to Gerald if he wants to keep running until the end. We can't do these long conference calls every single week though. I mean, this is something where Maybe we can just keep this the longest one that we have just to show the results. I, I like I like to show you how it works though. All right, any more questions at all? Yeah, I won't be here at the end. Um, so I will do a performance result, and I'll put up, and I'll show you uh, tonight. Uh, ta -ta -ta. I will show a performance result, and I'll leave it up. I'll just leave it. Hey, Phil, check in tonight on the viewer. I'm going to leave this on when I return around 8.30, 8.45 tonight. Um, I will put a performance review. So check in tonight, guys. And I'll take a snapshot of the performance review if you want. Yeah. We're going to go through the we're going to go through the wave file next, Larry, and then we'll get into the strategy analyzer. I'm showing you the best way to do it as far as right now though, where you can just put the chart up, put it back 30 days and see what you're looking at. Then we'll go through the wave file, then we'll go through strategy analyzer, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, Gerald, I could just let this run. I mean, they have a great feel for it, you know, already. I mean, here's what it is right here, Gerald. Before you turn it off, this gives you a good sampling of it already. We're almost at 30,000, 82%, taking every trade from March 20, 21st, all the way. We're going to today's date. You guys can check in um, tonight. I'll leave this up. I'll, I'll, when I get back at 8 o'clock tonight, let this thing run all the way to March 20th. I will put the uh, the end result there for you. And um, remember, past performance is not indicative of future results. Just remember that. But it gives you a good feel how the power of the system works just with one setting. Yep, Gerald, you can cut it off. Shut it off, Gerald. And then I'll show you guys later. Check in tonight. And Gerald, thanks, man. I'll get the program over you tomorrow. And then you just do your thing. And then please don't email Gerald about the file. We'll let you know when it's uploadable on the landing page. You can put these same settings in the current file you have to compare results. And we'll be good to go. All right. Everybody on the same page?
I will put this up when I return at 8.30 tonight. I'll show you the performance summary, check back in, take a snapshot. I gave the exact settings to put in on the file. Are we good to go? Yeah, exactly, Phil. Yep. Hey, Phil, give me to about 8.30, 9 o'clock, and I'll put it back up for you. Okay, bud? In fact, I can just leave it on there until tomorrow morning if you want me to show you. I'll make sure I put the performance summary when I get back. Absolutely. Yeah, Derek, it just gives you more options. I love this file. It gives you a lot more options to what you want to do as a trader. Okay, Martin, take care. All right, you guys have a good evening. That, that'll do it for me. I'll let this thing run. I will put a performance summary up when I get back around 8.30 or so tonight. i got to take off. I actually coach my 12-year-old in tackle football, and we are going for a state championship this uh, next weekend. So we're top four teams in Division One, which is awesome. So uh, hopefully we can pull that off. So I'm going to coach him right now, and then I'll catch you guys. Uh, I'll catch you guys um, here tomorrow morning, and I'll put the performance summary up. Hey, thanks, Bill. I'll put the performance summary up when I return here around 8:30 or so.